Welcome to episode two of the Oregon Family Law Guy. I'm your host, Hansary LaForest. It is July 26, 2018 on a beautiful Thursday evening. And as always, I'm helping Oregonians everywhere learn the ins and outs of family law here in Oregon. Uh, and I've got to say, I'm, I'm really enjoying this weather here in, in Portland. Uh, I know that a lot of Portlanders are not necessarily enjoying it as well. It is 94 degrees, but I got to tell you, from my folks uh, back down in Dallas County having to deal with that hundred some odd degree weather, <laughs> I will gladly take 94 degrees. That's something that uh, is a definitely a welcome change of pace. Um, in any event, uh, one of the topics that, uh, or I guess the main topic that we're going to be talking about today is child custody and specifically what to do if you're a parent and you've got one parent who's interfering uh, with the relationship uh, between you and the child. Uh, it's a common theme, uh, not just in Oregon, but really, uh, you know, every, everywhere you look at it, when you've got one parent who's actively trying to go out of their way to sabotage that relationship uh, with the child. And so one of the things that I want to do is I just wanted to give you guys listening a heads up as to what the law states basically in Oregon, uh, how the courts are generally going to view that, and what you can do if you're in that situation or you're actually the parent and you think you may be interfering or encroaching on that relationship between your kid and the other parent. Now, as I'll say before, and I'll say it again, uh, this is not legal advice. In no way is this, what I'm about to tell you, uh, any way a replacement for the advice of an attorney or anything like that. And I will not give legal advice on this podcast. As I mentioned, this is simply a way for you to know some of the nuts and bolts of this particular area. Uh, and just another way to engage in a conversation and get people a little bit educated about where I think the courts would go on this matter. So let's just take a step back, shall we? As for those of you who are aware, and maybe for some of you that are not aware, when a court is looking to issues of child custody, in other words, um, how to determine which parent is going to have legal and physical custody. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. And how to determine uh, the parenting time schedule. There's a standard that they're going to look at. And that standard is basically what's in the best interest of the child. Okay. Now, uh, that standard can be found in some statutes, uh, you know, specifically 107.137 of the Oregon Code. Um, and it's listed out. They basically have a list out of the different sort of factors that they're going to evaluate. And one of the factors that they list is the willingness and ability of each parent to facilitate and encourage um, continuous relationship between the other parent and the child. So what does that mean? Well, basically what it means is that when you're going to go to court and you're going to have some sort of litigation, whether it's trying to determine uh, you know, who's going to have that initial legal and fiscal custody of the child, or uh, if there's some sort of modification, there's already an arrangement uh, that's a parenting plan that's already in place, but it's got to be modified. One of the factors that they're always going to take into account is, hey, is the parents uh, with custody or, or is one of the parents uh, basically trying to facilitate and encourage the relationship with the other parent, or are they trying to interfere? So if the court hears evidence uh, that one of the parents is trying to interfere with the relationship between that other parent and the child, so they're going out of their way to sabotage their relationship, you know, hey, you know, can I see the child on this particular time period? No, you can't see them. No, you can't talk to them or, or you know, not giving them the information uh, concerning the grades, uh, concerning, you know, the health and well-being of the child. That's something that the court is not only going to take into account, but that's a big no-no, okay? So if you're in a situation where, as a parent, um, and you've got parenting time, or let's say you don't have parenting time, but you're trying to work on things, and that other parent is not giving you access to your kid, uh, basically going out of their way to uh, prevent any information being s disseminated 
or they're just doing little things. It could just be little acts of sabotage. That's going to be not only a big no-no for the court, but that's absolutely evidence that you want to be able to present to the court uh, to show why, hey, you know, that other parent may not be in the best position to whatever it is you're arguing, uh, uh, to either have legal or physical custody, or maybe not have as much parenting time as you'd like. And it works both ways as well. If you find yourself in a situation as a parent um, that you're not in a, in a position or, or you're engaging in what you feel is, is sabotage, you know, you need to stop that. That's something that is not going to look good. And if the other parent brings that to the attention of the judge, uh, that you're basically trying to interfere uh, with their parenting time, or you're trying to interfere with their relationship. And, and listen, it doesn't have to be kidnapping or anything like that. It could be little things. It could be, you know, events such as, you know, you don't let them talk on the phone with the kid. Or, you know, you promise that you're going to drop off the kid uh, to go see a movie or to go out to a park. And you don't do that. You don't follow through on those promises. You don't return those phone calls. You don't return those emails. And you don't return those text messages. Well, you know, if that person is represented by an attorney or something like that, you better believe that that's going to be evidence in front of the court um, on day one. So, you know, what I would suggest is if you find yourself in that situation, uh, if you find yourself, first of all, in the situation where you are interfering with, you know, the parent-child relationship with the other parent, uh, you need to stop that. Uh, and if you find yourself on the other side of things where you're trying to nurture that relationship through obviously a difficult time with the other parent, and that other parent is just being uncooperative, and they're not doing what they're supposed to do, you need to let them know, like, hey, listen, you got to knock this off. Because if you don't knock this off, well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a record of this and we're going to go back to court to deal with that. So those are the key things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to interference with the parent-child relationship. It's something that the courts look very down upon. Uh, and it's something that, quite frankly, you know, they are going to hammer the other parent uh, if if they find that situation. So you got to be very, very careful uh, about custodial interference and making sure that you're trying and making active steps to foster the relationship with the other parent. Which leads me to my next point. We spent a lot of time on the bad. You know, if a parent is interfering with the parent-child relationship of the other parent. Um, but it goes both ways, too, because think about it. Courts want to generally see two parents who may have divorced or they're just not in a relationship, but they've got a child in common. They want to see them proactively work on that relationship. They want to see them work together uh, towards not only developing their own relationship with the child, but also uh, the other parent's relationship with the child as well. What does that mean? Well, that means that if you're in a situation where you have a child and, and I understand that it may not be, depending on uh, the relationship that child has with the other parent, sometimes it's, it's tough. They want to see you make an active effort to at least try to facilitate that relationship. So, you know, making sure that you drop them off at designated uh, spots or drop them off during designated uh, parenting time plans, that's going to be critically important. Uh, making sure that you go out of your way to... to you know, open those lines of communication. Make sure that, you know, if the other parent reaches out to try to get in contact with the child, send over cards, uh, send text messages, emails during birthdays or other special events. You want to make sure that you're, you know, the child actually gets a hold of that information, gets a hold of that communication. Um, because number one, the courts are going to look uh, favorably on that. But number two, it's probably better for the child anyway. And listen, I understand not every parent-child relationship is going to work the best, especially when you have children go older, they reach their teenage years, maybe they are favor one parent over another parent, which, you know, it's it happens, it's common, uh, but that's a danger zone. If you have a situation where you, you have that problem, go out of your way, at least make an effort to try to facilitate the relationship. I'm not trying to say that, you know, it's going to be easy, and I'm certainly, and certainly courts are going to be understanding if, you know, there's not a great relationship between a child and one particular parent for whatever reason. But you're going to protect yourself if you're making sure that you go out of your way to at least facilitate that relationship, making sure that there's nothing that you do on your part that hinders or prevents that relationship from happening any other way. Because the last thing that you want to do 
is you don't want to give ammunition to any other parent to go into court to try to modify a parenting uh, schedule because of the fact of uh, of you trying or or maybe going out of your way or not really facilitating that relationship. So with that being said, uh, that's it for that particular point. Um, I just want to let you guys know uh, that I have posted the first episode of the Oregon Family Law Guy on Facebook in addition to YouTube, and it's also been approved for iTunes, so it's going to be on iTunes soon, as is this episode. So uh, what that means is that to find us, all you need to simply do is just make sure you hop on Facebook. Uh, just type in Oregon Family Law Guy. Uh, this episode is going to be recorded, as will other episodes. Um, and the most important thing in this particular case is, you know, I want to hear from you. Okay, if you find me on Oregon Family Law Guy, I want to hear what Oregonians are thinking and, and what if you've got issues or questions about the about the family law in general, whether it's child support, child custody, maybe modifications, uh, maybe enforcement actions. You know, I'm taking a look at what people are asking on, you know, some of these websites like Avo and Legal Match. And, you know, I just want to let you know that I'm here to answer these questions. Uh, and like I said, this is not legal advice, but if I could at least point you in the right direction, get you thinking about some topics and and share what I know, uh, I think that this podcast is going to accomplish its mission. So, uh, with that being said, uh, that's the end of the episode. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Make sure you follow us on YouTube. And soon you're going to be able to find this podcast on iTunes as well. Uh, that's it for episode two. And once again, I'm Hans Rilafaris, the Oregon Family Law Guy. 